the non-dual approach, as I said, goes much deeper. It, it first of all investigates what we essentially are. And it, it, it tra in this investigation, we trace back our experience of ourselves discarding everything that is not essential to us. Uh, our thoughts are obviously not essential to us. They are always appearing and disappearing. Our feelings, likewise, sensations, perceptions, activities, relationships. These are all um, elements of experience that are added to us. They remain for a while and then they leave us. But what, what is the us? What is the essential irreducible element of ourself? And if we, if we undergo this experiment, and it's a very simple experiment, anybody can do it, we end up with just our simple being, our simple self-aware being. It's like, it's like undressing yeah. at night. When we, when we go to bed at night, we, we take off all the layers of clothes. Each layer is, of course, superfluous to us. The clothes are changing all the time. And we get to our naked bodies, that, that, that element of ourself, relatively speaking, that cannot be removed. That is our naked being. Well, if we do the same thing, relative to our experience. And we take off, so to speak, our thoughts, feelings, memories, uh, sensations, perceptions, activities, and relationships. We end up with pure awareness. And th this is a pure self-aware being. So this is the first great discovery. And that's it, what we share, is that? Yeah, well, I, I was just okay. going to say that the, the first step is the discovery, I, I am awareness. This is not yet what is referred to as enlightenment or awakening in the traditions. Then the next step is to investigate the nature of okay, the awareness. Okay, so to review, so we took off all of the layers of identity and then we got to the most primal, the yes. most first principled, which was the awareness. Yes, we took off everything that we were identified with, everything that we thought was essential to us, thoughts, feelings, etc., and we got back to our, our naked identity, our original, our, our original face, as they say in the, the, uh, the Zen tradition. Uh, the, uh, the, the essential nature of the mind, as they say in, in Buddhism. The self, as they say in the, in the Hindu tradition. Uh, so that's the first discovery. I, uh, what I essentially am is simply the fact of being aware or awareness itself. The next discovery is, is to discover the nature of the awareness that I am, the, 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 the discovery that it is ever present, that it has no limits, and that its nature is, it is inherently peaceful and unconditionally fulfilled. And that this is the recognition that is traditionally referred to as enlightenment. So I would say this was the, the second recognition. Uh, uh, happiness is my nature. Yes. The third great Med recognition. That meditation the, is not something that we do. It's what we are. We are the happiness, the bliss, the yes, infinity. The, yeah. Yes. The essential nature of the awareness that I am is peace or happiness. Yes. Okay. And then the third, we can come back. We, 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 I'm, I'm just. Yes. 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 The, the, third, the third great recognition, which you uh, um, hinted at. The, the, the recognition that the being that we essentially are is shared by not only everyone, but everything. In other words, everyone and everything derive their apparently independent existence from a single, infinite and indivisible reality or, or whole whose nature is, well, Ultimately, it is unnameable because all names have evolved to uh, describe the content of experience. But if we are going to speak about these matters, let's give it a provisional name. In, in these circles, we tend to speak of it as consciousness or awareness. In religious circles, it is referred to as God's presence or Brahman. Or, but in common parlance, it is referred to as I, myself, my being. The, 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 the one infinite and indivisible reality, which doesn't connect us all, because in the ultimate analysis, there is no all. There, there is not a, a multiplicity and diversity of objects and selves, each with their own independent 
existence, to be connected. In the ultimate analysis, there are no independently existing objects or self. There is simply a single, infinite, indivisible whole, which is refracted through the prism of the finite mind and appears as many things and many people. So as a concession to the belief that there are many things and many people, we can say that we all share our reality. But in the ult if we really want to be, try to be more accurate, in the ultimate reality, that there is no we. There are no uh, separate objects or selves, either to be united or not to be united. There is simply the unity of being that appears yeah. Yeah. as this multiplicity and diversity. And, and the recognition... We are, we are speaking of this in, in intellectual terms and analyzing it with the use of our rational mind. But the recognition that we share our being is a familiar recognition that millions of people, I, I would suggest that everybody ha yeah. has some taste of, and that is the experience of love. Love is the recognition that we share our being. Yeah. Yeah.